Well, welcome back, everyone. It has been a November to remember, that is for sure. We've been in a market where we've seen a fairly precipitous drop in the dollar, and that obviously is uh, weeks ago, uh, November the 14th. Uh, we got that CPI data, and everything changed. The CPI came in cooler. Policymakers are now seen to be less hawkish. And it really does come down to, well, is the consumer stressed to the point where growth is going to be uh, bad enough for policymakers to cut rates sooner than later? And would that actually be good for financial markets? We know that we have seen the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ and the Magnificent Seven uh, go largely sideways. Okay, After the gap up on the 14th of November, we did rise and continue to get up to our 455 target. And we established a couple of flight paths early on this week, the magenta flight path that involved a pullback to refuel, and then up we go. And the blue flight path where the pullback is not as pernicious. Now this morning, we came in, got back on the magenta flight path, and the question mark is on the table as to whether or not tomorrow can be a day where we continue on the way up. And into the very end of the day, we did see the deck chair rearrangement that's been happening where folks have been selling some of the Magnificent Seven stocks. Well, Apple did get bid back up off the lows and so did most of the other key FANG stocks. NVIDIA did still hold on closer to the lows. However, you can see that reversal on the queues. Now, all of this is tantamount to a market that does not want to give up yet, has got enough liquidity to allow bidding to push it higher. The question mark is, is how sustainable is a higher high? We do know very clearly at this stage by looking back in time at where we came from and where the highs were that we've still got a ways to go to get back up to those highs before 2022 hit. Now, technical signals, those that are on chart timeframes uh, that are daily, uh, weekly, uh, do support a market that goes higher. And uh, in particular, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up on your screen over here a daily chart of the S&P 500 with our suite of technical tools layered on top of it. Now, there's a lot going on on the screen. I want you to focus in on first the main chart, champion cross, champion trend. They were in play early November. We then got the gap up, and that was November the 14th. Wealth signal, breakout forecaster, range breaker. We did get to stage three of the signal sequence. And if you take a look at price action on the SPY against the TRP target two, we are in a runaway breakout. Now, this then opens the door for, is there more here? Or directly, meaning go up to 460. Uh, and then cool off, consolidate, minor pullback, and go again. Uh, or is this now at a spot where we have to cool off right away? Well, based on how we've closed today, with the queues ratcheting up into the very end of the day, and the dollar pulling back slightly from its high inside the day, and obviously being under a resistance structure, those two things together do support a potential continued rise, but one that may be short-lived. So look at the subcharts, look at the... ITP triggers, we have throttled. The core trigger is still moving up. Fast trigger is magenta. There's a marginal room for a rise on the triple S. The soldiers have not come up to the top of the channel. The TRP momentum crossovers are at an extreme bullish. And the spike 2.0 tool is telling us that we may want to start coming back and using high octane bullish fuel. What we need to see at this stage is from a time frame perspective, where's the target? And then that's a bigger time frame that we're going to use, the weekly right here. And the target sits up here using the TRP toolkit where we got the TRP buy signals right over there and roughly 480 and then 500. Now, 480 was effectively the prior highs back over here. And what the market is set up to do technically is continue to rise. The question is, can the dollar be contained and is the rise directly from here or do we need to cool off? So the answer in that can come from the four hour chart and the one hour chart, of course. The four hour chart ended the day today with buy signals, targets, target one, 464, target two, 472. 
And we did start to see that bullish momentum pick up. However, we are not fully at that escape velocity point. So what I offer to you at this stage is a market that has a higher probability to make a less sustainable rise towards 460, perhaps a dollar or so higher, but then either consolidation or a minor pullback before we can get all the way up to that target one around that 464, 465 area. And tomorrow's the day where new money comes into the market. The opportunity for those flows to push the dollar down, trade it off for more FANG stocks and Magnificent Seven, that's on the table. And the way that the queues closed today would support that. I wish you a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Hope you've had a great week in markets. A huge shout out from the entire Wealth Charts team, BBT team, and Rob himself, who I was on the phone with just a little while ago. And there are so many things happening behind the scenes right now to improve, add to, exponentialize on all of the incredible tools that we are bringing to you to make 2024 the best year yet. 2023, December, we want to tackle that with you. And my view is very straightforward. I think that we've got signals that support a temporary rise up towards 460, probably a minor pullback from there before we can go higher. And in the week ahead, jobs data is going to certainly give us uh, more insight on directionality. Uh, looking forward to being there, navigating with you in videos just like these. Stay safe out there. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye for now, folks.